Thank you for joining us today on another episode of Future of Work C-Series Real Talk, focusing on women in blockchain. Today, we are interviewing the CEO of Genuino, Eleonora Mula. My name is Ahmed Flex Omar. I'm the Deputy Director and CXO for MALA. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our series. The contemporary environment for work is in a state of flux, not only due to the ongoing global pandemic, which has strained legacy workflow processes, but also thanks to the extreme and unexamined advances made in online collaboration and communication tools. Workplaces and whole companies are beginning to reevaluate how a business is organized in the 21st century. Addressing these open questions facing contemporary entrepreneurship is the Future of Work C-Series Real Talk sponsored by Mala and moderated by FinTech and Web 3.0 expert, Holly Weckler. The series gathers thought leaders and experts in the fields of entrepreneurship, management, and technology to discuss the executive perspective on building a business in a time of great change. And now it's my distinct honor to introduce your host and moderator, Holly Weckler. Well, thank you very much, Flex. Uh, you've got your pitch down uh, for uh, the series here, I have to say. I feel like uh, you touched on every uh, every point there. So thank you. There's uh, not much for me to really list here about the background other than um, this series started uh I think about a year and a half ago, uh, before the pandemic, uh, we actually did our first uh, virtual interview. And um, maybe it was two years ago now then, I guess, the pandemic, the time seems to have uh, gone at a different rate. But the reason why we began this series was really to to help educate and inspire uh, during a time when everyone kind of felt that they were down and out and there wasn't really many options. We realized that if you look at the situation differently. Maybe this was actually the time where people had all the options to actually learn more, meet more people and, you know, network virtually because these CEOs were actually not traveling and they weren't on the ground. So again, my name is Holly Weckler. I'm honored to be here today with our uh, special guest here. Uh, do you like to go by Ellie or Eleonora? What's the best? Ellie is fine. Ellie is fine. Okay, great. Well, so thank you so much. I'm Holly from Figment, and we're going to pass the mic over to Ellie and tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're calling in from, um, and your background. Thanks a lot, Ollie. First of all, I would like to thank you for the opportunity, and uh, I'm going to make uh, maybe a quick introduction about myself and uh, my career. Uh, I'm Eleonora Mulas, co-CEO and co-founder of uh, Genuino. I'm uh, at the moment based in, uh, uh, in Turin, when uh, actually I achieved my master in communication and marketing. Uh, after a couple of years, I moved to Milan, starting my career in finance, working actually for two banks. Uh, and then uh, I've got a nice opportunity in the UAE, joining for uh, Emirates Airline. I was working as a business class uh, uh, customer manager. Uh, for the business class, actually was taking care about the service, uh, the customer uh, cool. loyalty program. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Let's, let's stop here for a second because I feel like that's a big jump, right? To go from finance to working <laughs> for um, and customer service. So tell me a little bit about, you know, what caused you to make the switch? It seems as if it's a pretty different uh, path in your career there. Yeah, it is. But, uh, you know, the opportunity was so big, uh, the possibility to travel, uh, uh, even going around uh, uh, outside of Italy was so good. Uh, that's why I decided to, in some, let's say, switch my my career and uh, start the, this, uh, this new opportunity. And actually, I was very, very happy uh, about it. I spent their six years working for, uh, for them. And it uh, was amazing, especially because there I met uh, uh, the other co-founder of my project that is called Gabriele Bernasconi. Uh, he's Italian as well. And um, it's weird mm -hmm. because we are both Italian, but we met in Dubai. And, that's, good. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that, let's talk about that for a second. So was he working with you at the airline yeah. doing customer service as well? or? Um, he actually uh, was coming from an experience of 10 years uh, in Nike. 
And uh, we met there because we were working both uh, in a marketing project. And uh, after that, uh, I still remember, was uh, mid of August uh, um, 2016, yes. And uh, we started the first uh, investment in, uh, in the crypto space. I still remember we were investing in uh, Litecoins. We yeah. were just start actually starting for fun, but uh, after a few months, uh, we really understand that uh, was a good opportunity and uh, there was a big potential behind uh, this technology, especially related to the supply chain and the trustability. That's why we decided to change our life, uh, start a new experience and uh, open up this company that is called uh, Giruino. So how did you guys go from investing in Litecoins to thinking about Genuino? When I was doing some research, it, it sounded like um, you, when you first started your partnership, it was to certify the jerseys. How did you guys kind of make the connection from, I guess, having a little bit of crypto curiosity to uh, beginning a new venture? Yeah, actually, at the very beginning, it was not very easy because, uh, as I said before, we uh, are not coming from uh, NIT backgrounds. So uh, that's why it was even a little bit complicated to understand totally the technology. But uh, we understand straight away that there was a big potential, especially in uh, the supply chain. And uh, because actually, uh, as I said, Gabriele had a big experience in sport, we decided to be focused in the sport market, especially because uh, um, there was a big opportunity in the collectible sector. Uh, through many statistics and articles, we found out uh, actually that uh, there is a big uh, opportunity in the collectible market, but the problem actually was uh, uh, the counterfeiting <laughs> uh, because uh, the market is actually producing 15 billions per year, but uh, uh, the problem is that half of these products are actually counterfeited. So that's why we decided to uh, create our uh, certification process. Oh, wow. Okay. So how did you get the inter like the in with the Fiorentina soccer league though? How did that partnership begin? Was it because of Gabriella's connections or? Uh, no, actually it was a little bit different because uh, at that moment uh, there was a change of ownership because uh, Rocco Commisso was buying uh, the property of uh, the ACF Fiorentina and uh, uh, was even easier for us uh, uh, to promote our project uh, and actually at that moment uh, he wanted to bring more innovation inside uh, uh, the team that's why oh. we decided to collaborate and that was in 2017 is that correct it was uh, 2019 actually 2019 yeah, okay. yeah because we built our company on the 1st of february 2019 we okay. got our first round of funds from uh, a small lab based in milano business angel and then we start our collaboration in the 2019 of september yeah with, okay. uh, with the with frontier and then how did you guys hire like how were you you know what was your strategy on growing your team yeah Just so together uh, in different locations yeah, exactly. Still at the moment, we are working all, uh, all by remote. And uh, uh, the first profiles that we were looking for, of course, uh, uh, were developers. So we decided actually to build our team. At the moment, uh, we have just for the IT part, five people. They are working uh, for the front end part, the back end part, and uh, the blockchain, of course. And then uh, um, we built also the part of marketing. Um, that actually is uh, more uh, um, is more about the freelancer that are working as uh, uh, community managers and uh, uh, digital manager uh, strategy. So yeah, this is more or less our team. Uh, there is also a creative part because, of course, we are working with NFTs, so <laughs> that part is mandatory. And uh, we are more or less uh, uh, ten people inside uh, inside the company. So how did you do the hiring though, right? Because if you guys were starting your company right in the beginning of 2019, right? That's kind of as everything was starting to, um, you know, really change. Um, was there, you know, did you guys have a certain process? Do you have certain communication tools you guys are using for, you know, this future of work, everyone dealing in a remote space? Yeah, basically, I can say that uh, I built uh, the entire team uh, by myself, <laughs> making a lot of research. <laughs> 
and uh, was very, very tough, not easy at all, especially because my background is not coming from IT. But uh, <laughs> I learned a lot, uh, trust me, <laughs> really a lot. It was a nice experience, and uh, especially because at that stage it was not very easy to find blockchain developers, so, so oh, yeah. especially here in Italy. So that was, uh, was the problem. Uh, but I, I was quite lucky, I think, and uh, everything went well. So we found an amazing CTO that actually is still running the, the project with me. And uh, at the moment, uh, um, we are just following the Agile method. So every day we are just making in the morning a, a short startup and a short stand up. And basically we have a tracking platform uh, through, uh, we are just um, fixing all the, the all the tasks, all the tasks that we have to do day by day. And, uh, and that's it. Is uh, is quite easy, especially because we are a small team. Uh, but is uh, is nice. Is nice, and I'm happy about it. Do you guys use Discord or Slack? And what tools are you guys using to keep yeah. in touch? We are using uh, at the moment as a platform uh, UTrack that is very similar to Jira. Uh, it's just uh, let's call it like a kind of a monitoring uh, platform. And then we have Slack that is uh, actually organized by rooms. And uh, through the rooms, so we can uh, communicate uh, with the different uh, department. Because as I said before, we have the IT DEP, but uh, there are also other sections, like for example, marketing or uh, the creative part. And uh, we still need to communicate all together. That's why we are using Slack. Yeah. Well, yeah, we we use Slack in my company as well. I'm a, I'm a fan of it. I can't yeah. say I've gotten into Discord yet. I'm still trying, but it's a telegram discord there's a lot of new channels uh, to get used to in the crypto world i've been learning um want to know a little bit more about this so the genuine partnership as i was reading about it you guys started with just the certification of the jerseys uh was it their idea to do the nft launch for their 95th birthday or how did that kind of conversation come up how did you guys kind of i guess build upon your partnership yeah, basically it was not very easy at the very beginning to create the entire process because you have to considering that we were talking about NFTs already in the 2019. And uh, for the majority of the case, uh, the NFT was linked to Ethereum. So that's why we're starting using that kind of uh, blockchain protocol. Uh, what we built was uh, this certification process uh, that actually is even uh, covered by a patent pending. And uh, I can even show uh, our patch so yeah <laughs> that please, thank a little you. bit interesting so basically uh, how is working we create this patch just behind there are two tags and uh, uh, what we are doing before of the match we are creating a kind of association between the jersey the name of the player and the tags uh, just before of the match uh, there are uh, we are just locating a, a kind of a iot sensor inside the locker room and uh, uh, once the, the athletes are coming in the locker room, uh, the tax is communicating uh, with uh, uh, the IoT sensor. Everything uh, is written in the blockchain. We are creating, uh, let's call them a kind of timestamp. And uh, when the consumer actually are buying the product by scanner dispatch, they can see all the tracking steps. And they can also receive uh, uh, a kind of digital certification, let's call it. Uh, where basically uh, they can receive this token that uh, will be the, the ownership certification. Uh, this certificate will guarantee the authenticity of the product, basically. So let's talk a little bit more about the physical piece, right? So I know I've personally gotten um, my own NFTs from you guys, um, but I, there's a little bit, I think, a really interesting thing that you guys offer is it's not only just the digital part, but isn't there a piece about the jerseys where you actually can redeem? I'll let you tell the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So uh, the reason why we were very focused uh, in uh, in the jersey was because uh, uh, basically the jersey is a little bit uh, the the symbol for the fan. Uh, so that's why is uh, is very important. And uh, actually, when we started, uh, there was uh, a totally an official market. So this was uh, the the starting problem. So basically, uh, all those kind of uh, products were sold just uh, through normal marketplace, like for example uh, uh, eBay or uh, for example, through uh, the housekeeper. And the problem was that who was buying the product was not sure 100% that actually was authentic. So that's why we decided to uh, targeting the, the match world jersey. And so 
you're saying like your target is who is your target right now? Is it, yeah. people, Italy, <laughs> is it global? Where would that be? Yeah, that's a good question, actually, because uh, our target at the moment is uh, fragmented because uh, we have two kinds of uh, target. One is the fan that, uh, of course, uh, is uh, driven by the passion for the, the, the football team. And uh, the second one actually is uh, uh, the crypto nerd that is very interested in, uh, in blockchain. And uh, uh, that's why is, uh, of course, uh, um, investing a lot and uh, using those kind of platform. So those two are the most involved target that at the moment we have. Have you noticed if it's more skewed towards males, females? Uh, they are more males. <laughs> I'm sad to tell you only, but yeah, they are well, more I, But I think you, you and I have talked, though, that you do have some ideas that maybe we can uh, touch on a little bit about how your experience has been being a female in blockchain. And then um, as a teaser for everybody, talk about what you guys are planning in Milan afterwards. Yeah, 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 no, of course, uh, especially because uh, um, there are going to be important next step for our company, uh, especially because, uh, as I said before, this uh, certification process uh, is uh, very helpful, not only for the sports memorabilia stuff, but also uh, for other markets, like, uh, let's say, for example, fashion. And uh, uh, we see also big opportunity in this market. For example, um, we are all see what is happening now with the metaverse uh, and uh, with the to fashion <clears throat> so um, we think that there is really like a big opportunity we already have done also an event in uh, in the metaverse actually it was uh, really really nice because we had the opportunity to show our uh, concept in uh, inside the metaverse actually it was a space that uh, was built by by us and also from another company that is based in the states and uh, we were presenting uh, our concept. Uh, so all of that uh, to say that uh, we are very focused also in fashion. Uh, first of all, because we are uh, coming from Italy, we have a, a strong uh, made in Italy <laughs> that needs to be certified and authenticated <laughs> because there is uh, there are lots of problems with uh, the counterfeiting things. So uh, mm -hmm. of course the certification protocol can uh, can help a lot. And uh, second of all. Uh, uh, we are trying to enter in the fashion uh, market. That's why we are uh, trying to collaborate uh, with uh, an important uh, leather, uh, um, leather brand based uh, here in, uh, in Firenze. And uh, we will, uh, will opt to be part uh, of the Fashion Week uh, in Milan in uh, February 2022. Uh, maybe we hope to just be present with uh, a certified collection through to NFTs. You, I believe you were telling me a little bit about a patent that you guys have with this uh, collectibles. Maybe you want to share a little bit about that. Yeah, of course. So uh, at the moment, the process uh, is, uh, uh, is a patent pending. So we are still under evaluation, but uh, uh, we are very happy about uh, what we have done. Uh, and actually, we were just uh, uh, proposing our patent in Italy and even outside of Italy with a specific uh, um, formulation that is called PCT. And uh, uh, it takes a while, but uh, we really uh, wanted to invest a lot in, uh, in this thing because we strongly believe that is a, is a good asset to, to have inside our company. And uh, what basically we put under patent is the entire process. So the association that we have done uh, with the NFT, uh, the jersey and the tax, and then all uh, the fact that we create uh, the NFT that is uh, uh, gonna write everything in, uh, in the blockchain. So we put under patent the entire process. But as I said, not just because, before, uh, because of the sports, for the sports, but also for other kind of uh, markets. Yeah, and so I'd like to build on that a little bit. I feel as though you guys have done a really great job in a short time with building some pretty um, large name strategic par uh, partners. Um, I noticed as well, you guys are partnering with uh, the Museum of Florence and the, the, the School of Comics. And how, I'm just kind of curious as far as like, you know, advice for others. How have you guys been able to, you know, secure these partnerships? Has it just been cold calling? Has there been any, um, you know, have you been using network introductions? Um, is there any certain keys to your success? Yeah, no, in this case, we have been uh, introduced by the ACF, <clears throat> sorry, by the ACF of Fiorentina, uh, because there was a strong connection between the museum and uh, uh, the football team. 
basically, actually, you introduce also another concept that is very interesting for us because, uh, uh, apart the certification process, after the COVID, uh, the majority of the football teams were really trying to, uh, um, let's say, find the new revenue streamlines. That's why we decided to introduce in our concept uh, also a specific fan engagement system that uh, could be linked actually to uh, the certification process. That's why we try to create this experience that is a little bit similar to uh, the experience about uh, where we were kids uh, opening uh, a digital uh, uh, trading packs and finding uh, cards. So basically, if you are going uh, um, on our platform, the, actually you can find it under www.genuino.com. You can find, you will be able to open uh, open up a pack. Inside uh, those packs, you will find different cards, and uh, uh, one of each is just representing an experience. Can be representing, uh, for example, uh, a ticket for the stadium. Can be representing uh, uh, special merchandising in limited edition, uh, or just a collectible. We implement uh, uh, this experience uh, link uh, uh, emission uh, that uh, basically we are uh, um organized through Discord. And uh, through these missions, uh, basically the consumer can get uh, more uh, premium packs. When I do this real quick, let me see if I can. I've not tried to. Yeah. Oh, flex disabled screen sharing. I would have showed everybody, or maybe it's Khalil. I don't know. I was going to show everyone my collections that I have. But um, I think that it's a really interesting. Like, I personally was pretty excited to get my collection. And I think one of the other um, aspects that I, I would like to touch on, um, you know, before we kind of talk about the marketplace, was when you guys were launching, you mentioned to me it was an issue for uh, to work with the U.S. Um, did you struggle with any other countries or was it just the U.S. that couldn't buy the certain uh, token or currency you guys were using? Can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, of course. So you touched actually a good point because uh, at the moment inside our platform, we are using a specific coin that is called XDAI. Um, why we are using it? Just because uh, uh, we are... Uh, able to keep in low the gas fee because with Ethereum, we all know that actually the fluctuation is uh, quite big. And um, in this case, we are using XDAI that is a stable coin, is uh, um, comparable to $1, basically. And uh, uh, this uh, can be like a guarantee to keep low the gas fee. Uh, the problem is that, uh, of course, uh, for example, in the States, uh, it's not very easy to, uh, to buy XDAI. That's why we implemented uh, a different system in order to, to do it. Uh, for example, here in Europe, it's going to be much, uh, much easier because we are using a, a specific system that is called Ramp Network. It's a kind of bridge. So you can uh, easily just use your credit card and then convert uh, um, your fiat money in uh, in crypto, in this case in XDAI. Uh, this process uh, cannot be done, <laughs> unfortunately, in the States. Uh, so this means that uh, um, people that are coming from, that are uh, buying from the States, they have actually to buy Ethereum and then convert in XDAI um, and then make the, the deposit. So it's going to be a little bit uh, more uh, um, more complicated, but uh, um, we also create a kind of tutorials or medium just in our in also videos in order to make uh, the user experience uh, um, much better and much uh, uh, easier for, uh, for the consumer. Okay, and then I know we talked a little bit about this as well, but I wanted to dive in a little bit more to the marketplace. Um, because I think it's really interesting uh, about the idea that I could get one of these jerseys that's been worn or maybe, you know, maybe Brad Pitt or some, you know, famous person ended up wearing this jersey um, and then it goes back on the chain. Like, how does that exactly work? Like, can like, do you have to verify the condition of it or I'm, I'm not, I guess I don't fully understand how the marketplace works with it, the physical goods with, versus mm -hmm. the trading cards. I can understand how people can do the trading cards on your marketplace. And I know you guys, looks like you have uh, plans to expand to fashion music and, and other things. Um, but how does it work right now with the current marketplace? 
Yeah, so basically the guarantee that we give to the consumer is that the jersey was worn at that time for that specific match uh, by the athlete. And then basically once that the athlete is coming back to the locker room, we just start collecting all the jersey uh, and um, we are just proceeding with the shipment through the football team and um, the thing is, uh, the selling is a little bit uh, uh, more uh, engaging, let's say, because it's not that uh, you have to go to a normal marketplace uh, or uh, you can buy those kind of products through retails, uh, but actually you have to go on our web platform and then just buy the pack and uh, maybe you will be uh, lucky enough to find uh, this, uh, the card that is called Legend and uh, usually linked to the, those cards, uh, actually there is the, the real product. Uh, and this is uh, actually one way. The other way is just make a bid through our auction system, always inside the web platform, uh, in order to uh, get your uh, limited edition match worn jersey. Okay, great. Well, thank you. That's been a really great um, overview of Genuino. I um, want to talk a little bit to you again about your experience as being a female in blockchain starting in 2016 until now. Um, any changes that you've seen? Um, any advantages? Any disadvantages? Um, just share how your experience has been. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, only actually just a few days ago I was reading an article that was uh, saying that uh, only the 5% of women are involved in the crypto space and uh, only the 17.7% are involved in uh, tech startups. What can I say that actually is a big pity because uh, I think really that women can bring an added value to this market. Uh, I can understand that, uh, you know, uh, women are uh, very busy because they have uh, uh, maybe kids or, uh, you know, uh, private life, uh, taking care about the family. But uh, I can tell you that actually I strongly believe that uh, women have uh, different kind of qualities uh, in comparison with males. And uh, I can tell you that, uh, you know, they are very empathetic, for example. And this can help a lot for negotiation in uh, building uh, your team in recruitment. Uh, they are very strong uh, in uh, coordination. Organization is not just about uh, a multitasking fact. Uh, is really that they are really good uh, in uh, budgeting and the cost saving. So they have so many qualities. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, this market market is missing a lot um, just because there is this short per percentage about uh, women involved in, uh, in tech and also in, uh, in the crypto market. So I can even tell you, you know, from my perspective, for example, I can see that um, uh, between uh, myself and uh, the other co-founder, Gabriele, there are so many differences. But uh, at the end, we have uh, yeah, so many uh, points of view. And I think that actually this is a strength. It's not a problem. It's, uh, actually, we are very complementary. And this is a, is a strength for the company because uh, um, this kind of thing can just let uh, to your company grow faster and better. So I think it's very important uh, to have uh, the presence of women uh, in uh, in this sector. And, and what's, what's Genuino's breakup? Like how many females versus males do you guys have in your company? Unfortunately, at the moment, uh, we are th there are more males, <laughs> but I'm trying to push oh. a lot <laughs> in order to <laughs> bring more women <laughs> as possible, as much as possible. And uh, for example, uh, um, there are many uh, ladies involved in the creative parts uh, and actually I, will, I really would like to, to tell them a big thank you because they are doing such a great and big jobs. So it's, uh, it's amazing. And uh, I really hope that uh, other uh, women will be involved in my project, especially for marketing, especially because now we are building our marketing uh, department. We are making it bigger and uh, I hope that uh, uh, more women will join it. So with that, with making your marketing department bigger and going to be hiring, or are you guys looking to hire outside of Italy as well? Um, I know you had mentioned to me that you had, uh, you know, definitely interest from other countries for purchasing. So I wasn't sure if you're looking at hiring as well. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, uh, at the moment, we are closing another round of funds. 
and uh, we are very excited about it, especially because uh, I have to tell you there will be also a few American investors. So uh, we are going to be very happy because uh, actually half of our consumers are coming from the States. And uh, this is the reason why we are hiring uh, uh, new profiles, especially for marketing, because uh, as I said before, we have already created uh, our IT um, department, but uh, we would like to potentiate actually the, uh, the marketing part, uh, introducing new, uh, new people new profiles also coming actually from from the states uh, especially in order to make our community bigger and uh, working especially uh, in uh, in discord and in twitter because we strongly believe about the power of the community oh this has been this has been great um i think i am down to you my anime questions here i think the only other thing i want to know is just like what was, I guess, uh, up next? I know we kind of talked about Milan Fashion Week, but is there anything else that you want to, you know, share any exciting things you guys are doing with the School of Comics or, um, you know, anything left before we uh, end this discussion? It's been wonderful chatting with you today. No, no, thanks a lot for, uh, for the opportunity, uh, Oli. And uh, as I said, uh, I really would like to say a big thank you uh, to all the women inside my team. And uh, uh, second of all, I really think that the more women are going to join uh, the crypto space because uh, I think it really needs of uh, uh, profiles like that. Well, and, and I know that you said that you, what you guys are thinking about doing with Milan Fashion Week, is it a purse or what was... Um, you know, I mean, I, I know my dream would be to have a purse that is like see through that has some really funky designs on it that is going to be the right size for when I go to a stadium and I don't have to turn around. But I think you guys were thinking on a different level there. Um, was it a purse you guys were doing for Milan Fashion Week as, as the last teaser or you can't, you can't share that info? Uh, at the moment, I can share too much <laughs> because we are still working on it. But uh, um, the brand uh, is uh, is quite popular here in Italy. And uh, what we would like to, to do is uh, um, be involved with them for a specific uh, limited edition uh, edition uh, collection, uh, okay. more about uh, yeah bags. And uh, we yeah yeah it's gonna be very interesting. Uh, and uh, we would like to present uh, this collection for the fashion week. Uh, and all the, the single products will be certified by by Genuino, but uh, we are still working on it. So that's why I cannot share it more. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for thank you for that little teaser. Uh, well, it has been great so much. And um, if anybody is interested, um, we have all of uh, Genuino's information on the event site. Um, and uh, it has been a pleasure chatting with you today. And I look forward to watching the Jenny Mino Jers uh, Jersey and uh, Jersey Journey, I guess. <laughs> uh, Flex, is there anything you'd like to say in closing? No, I think we're all we're all said. Great job, ladies. Thank thank you so much, Ellie, for uh, joining us, and Holly for doing a great job moderating today. It was it was a blast. I have to say, it's really exciting to actually be back. Uh, doing interviews on, on finance. Flex and I decided to expand the series last year because we were like, I've done FinTech for years. Let's expand. And we did supply chain. We did fashion. We did customer success with like IoT. Remember Flex? The, uh, Martina was telling us about pet foxes that we're using to open it. I mean, I learned a lot, but I have to say it's nice to be back in my element uh, talking what I do now for work, which is working at Figment, which is a Web3 company, dealing with different wonderful startups like yourself on the blockchain. So it's exciting to be back emailing a, a powerful woman. And I love what you guys are doing for Genuino and for the community as that you're trying to hire more females in this space. Um, it's always a mission of mine too. I agree with you. I, I think this space is obviously pretty male dominated, but I have to say, I feel pretty blessed to, you know, the people at my company are really open to sharing and, and teaching because I think learning the lingo and learning, you know, the differences, even for me spending seven years in working with developers, all the words are different. It's not staging environment, it's test net. It's not production, it's main net, right? And even, you know, we won't even start getting into it. Polkadot's parachains versus, you know, cross chains, bridges. There's just so many different uh, new terms. Mm -hmm. Layer one, layer two, right? And what you went through with how people can't purchase the same way they can purchase in Italy. So I'm really excited for 2022 and, and to see what happens as Web3 really 
grows and we start to continue to build together. So thank you for what you're doing. Uh, Flex, thank you for bringing us all together. Uh, and I, as mentioned, I can't wait to continue to watch the Genuino journey. Thanks a lot for the opportunity, Oli. And thanks also to Flex. All right, guys, tune in next time. Ciao, ciao.